Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to turn this ordinary, everyday oatmeal can into a very into a large format, five by seven or four by five, if you want to go that small, pinhole camera. So it's pretty simple. What you need to do first is paint the inside of the can black. Really, really black. Once you've got the inside of the can, and of course also the lid painted black, actually, let's take a step back. First thing you need to do is eat and enjoy the oatmeal. Then you need to paint the inside of the can black. Wash it first, then paint it. Paint the lid black, and you're in pretty good shape. So there's a seam in the back of the camera here, which you should be able to see. And what I'm going to do is create this so that that seam is the back of the camera. When, I ha when I'm loading this camera in the dark, which I'll have to do, using the seam as the back of the camera will help me find uh, how I'm going to load the film. Also, if I used the seam as the front of the camera, if I punched a hole in it, it would risk splitting the seam and creating a light leak, which I don't want to do. So the way the camera is going to be loaded, if you wanted to use 4x5 sheet film, which is huge, this is 4 inches by 5 inches, you could just drop it in there. So if this looks familiar, that's because it's a fairly similar build to the black tube camera video I did a, f a few months ago, only this is a lot easier to do, faster and cheaper. And you get to enjoy some oatmeal out of it. So you can use 4x5 four, four sheet film as a landscape or as a portrait. One thing about 4x5 as a portrait is you get all kinds of weird bending going on with the film, which will create some fairly interesting effects. Here's the 5x7 film. Here's the 4x5 film. So it's almost twice the size of 4x5 film. The 5x7 film, obviously, can't go in portrait. So it's only going to be landscape. And it actually only almost fits. So here it's loaded in. Let's, let's switch this around. Maybe it'll be easier to see this way. So that's how the 5x7 film is going to be loaded in. And you can see it really wraps around almost the entire uh, can. Well, it wraps around about two-thirds of the can. So it's, the image circle is not going to be quite as big as the 5x7 film. So I'm going to set this down with the seam to the back, just like that. I'm going to line up this nail in the center just like that. I'm going to get this hammer and I'm going to blow your eardrums out. There we go. Nice little hole. Pop it back into alignment. I'm going to put the nail through the hole the other way. No, I'm not. I haven't made the hole big enough yet. So. Now the nail can go through this, the hole the entire way. I'm going to come around and feed the nail through the hole this way. And the reason is because inside the camera now, there are some pointed pieces pointing into the hole from the metal that was bent. So I'm just going to push on this to try and work some of those out so they're a little bit flatter because I want to mount the pinhole. That's close enough to center. I want to mount the pinhole inside the camera. So for that, what we're going to need is some electrician's tape. So let's take a look here. That's pretty close to flat. It's not perfect. But we're going to take the pinhole, and we're going to tape it up, and we're going to tape it inside the camera. Tape it with the silver side facing the can this way on the inside. And that's because I don't want the silver reflecting inside the can. Now there is a yellow back to this, yellow and red, and uh, I'm using scotch tape because it's what I have right now. First thing I'm going to do is grab a flashlight, and that's going to allow me to see the hole. But it's not going to allow you to see the hole, apparently. So there we can see the hole. What that's going to allow me to do is line up the pinhole 
Okay, so I've inserted the pinhole, and it's going to be hard to see, but there's a little tiny aluminum pinhole in there. It's not quite centered in the hole. Uh, if you were to build something similar to this, you actually might want to make the hole a little bit bigger than I did. At any rate, I have the pinhole in here, and the way that we load this camera is in the dark. Everything that we do with this is in the dark. You can use 4x5 sheet film, you could use 5x7 sheet film, or you could use 5x7 photo paper. And I'm going to do this first load with 5x7 sheet film. And there's two sides. There's the anti-halation layer, which is this shiny side, and the emulsion layer, which is this dull side. So it's going to fit in just like that. And again, using the seam as the back allows me to line it up so it's approximately evenly spaced within the can, which is what's needed. This exact build with 5x7 anything would be difficult to do in a dark bag because this lid doesn't perfectly fit on. With the 5x7 film, unless you have a hammer. There we go. Now if that film weren't, weren't toast, it would be time to go shooting after we put a shutter on this. I can't believe I forgot the shutter. So we're going to make the shutter here. And to make the shutter we need some 120 backing paper or some, some electrician's tape is generally dark enough if you're not going to be leaving your camera out in the sun for a long time. So I'm just going to cut a little piece of electrician's tape, or of, um, of 120 backing paper. I also like the 120 backing paper for this build because it blends in fairly well with the camera, putting it white side out like that. And if you want to further not draw attention to it, you can use, again, the clear plastic tape. And all you have to do is set this so that the white part is in touch is touching the sticky surface of the tape. I'm going to put it so that it is flappy side up like this so that when I pull it down gravity is going to hold the shutter in place for me and I don't have to. So I can walk away. If, if you're using a piece of photo paper for this camera. It's about a 15 second exposure time. With film, you'll, it'll depend on the film's ISO. For the aperture on this, that holds approximately uh, 0.8 millimeters, give or take. So the next thing we need to do is figure out the uh, aperture and the exposure time. So here's our 5 by 7 sheet of film, and the diagonal on this is 8.6 zero two three three inches um, should be right I'm doing this in my head didn't look it up online earlier to do my math for me so in millimeters the diagonal is two hundred and eighteen point four four so we'll need to know that to calculate our field of view so next thing we need to know is the distance from the film uh, from the from the, so the next thing we need to, know, need to know, the difference from the pinhole to the film plane. So I've got a millimeter caliper here, and the, the pinhole is near as makes no difference in line with that end of the millimeter caliper. And the film plane is going to be approximately right here. It's not going to be a perfectly flat film plane because it's going to rest at a slight angle with 5 by 7 film due to the size of the film being about an eighth of an inch taller than this can's interior. So what I'm going to do is make an estimate of from the front of the film plane here to the back of the inside of the camera and average it. And it's going to be about 102 millimeters. Actually, let's do this. Let's call it 100 millimeters for the sake of easy math. I measured the pinhole, which is 0.8 millimeters, giving us a, an f-stop of 125, so it's f125. So what that's telling us is that with 218 millimeter diagonal film, we will have 
an image diameter of 192 millimeters, which means that the image circle is going to be about this large. If this was a flat plane of film like this, it's not though, it's curved. So we're actually going to get almost the entire film plane covered in this pinhole camera. Using 100 ISO film at f125 on a sunny day, the exposure time is going to be approximately one half of a second. On a sunny day using paper, photo paper, your exposure time is going to be about 15 seconds. So the next thing you're going to see will be photos I've taken with this actual camera over the coming weeks. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please leave me a comment in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about getting back to those fairly quickly. If you have any ideas for future videos, uh, I'm more than happy to do those if I have the technical know-how and the equipment to do them. Uh, if you give me a thumbs up, that lets me know that I'm on the right track and that this was helpful. Now bear in mind, this doesn't have to be a uh, an oatmeal can. It was just, uh, I just finished some oatmeal and I wanted to make a camera out of it. It could be a dog food can with slightly smaller film. Uh, a paint can, a gallon paint can could hold an 8 by 10 sheet of film and do the same basic thing and it would make huge pictures. Um, could also hold an 8 by 10 piece of photo paper. It could be other, it could be a 5 gallon bucket if you wanted to go ultra large format and make 11 by 14 negatives. At any rate, it doesn't have to be this. This is just a simple way of doing it. Uh, and one last thing before the photos start. Thank you guys for watching. So what you're going to do when you nail this, you're just going to hold the nail right here, hold on to the can with your hand, and got my hand, I'm going to have my hand wrapped around about like this, okay, I'm going to pinch the nail, one, two, Okay.